The watch I'm reviewing in today's video is definitely an interesting one, and I think it's going to provoke a few interesting comments for a few reasons. Firstly, Siegel, when they sent me this watch, claimed it is not a homage watch. They were, in fact, the first to use this dial design on any watch. And I've no reason to disbelieve them. This watch has been available for quite a while now and I have seen some similar looking watches online, but more recently, so yeah. This could very well be an original design by Siegel. But regardless, there's no doubt it is paying homage to vintage watches. It's very much a vintage inspired new release by Siegel. The other reason why I think it might provoke a few comments is the price. Um, this one houses the Siegel ST2100. That is a mid-tier movement by Siegel. I've produced a number of videos on watches housing this movement and I really, really like this movement. It finds its way into Siegel watches costing upwards of £600 or so. So I'm not surprised um, they've used it in this watch and I'm not surprised that they're asking for what they're asking for for this watch but yeah it's not really AliExpress money but then Siegel is a global watch brand they're massive they're not an AliExpress brand if you're not familiar with Siegel they produce a huge percentage of the world's automatic movements that's primarily what they do they are a movement manufacturer but more recently I say more recently they've been selling their own watches for a long long time now and they are on the whole very well made watches and the third reason well the clasp it's an interesting one I've already mentioned this watch is a vintage inspired watch and they have gone the whole hog with this watch the size of this thing is very much what you'd expect from a sort of 40 50 year old watch it's quite small the bracelet is very thin they've given you solid links which is how how some premium bracelets were made back in the day um, solid end links as well but the clasp it feels to be honest just like a vintage or 70s clasp from a Seiko I have handled around 300 vintage watches now and yeah I gotta say the clasp on this thing is basically identical to vintage clasps that you'd find on Seikos from the 70s and I think it works let me tell you why um, the size and the weight of this watch it's not a particularly big or heavy watch and if you were to have a milled clasp on this bracelet I think it would make the clasp a bit thicker a bit chunkier a bit heavier and maybe make the watch feel a little bit unbalanced and well, I just love these clasps they are super comfortable I have to say the vintage clasps that I see on the vintage Seikos that I handle I have no complaints with them whatsoever and um, we have become accustomed to milled clasps haven't we on more substantial modern watches but yeah I think this one works even the polishing and the brushing is very much what you'd expect from a vintage Seiko clasp. So I personally like it, but I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that say, no, absolutely not, unforgivable, this sort of money for um, a Seagull watch with that clasp, it's daylight robbery, and I can sort of see where you're coming from, but... Yeah, I like it. Anyway, I've been rabbiting on and I haven't really mentioned the main feature on this watch, which is the dial. How cool is that? They've got this sort of colourful one available and a black and white sort of monochrome version because, well, TVs back in the day were also black and white, weren't they? And I think it's a really cool idea because, well, we've seen watches for many, many years now with what we call or reference TV dials because of the shape of the case or the aperture that holds the dial. Um, yeah, it looks very much like an old screen from an old TV. Well, why not put this sort of no signal image on it? I think that's a really, really good idea. And I'm surprised it hasn't been done already or maybe it has maybe this is a homage i don't think it is you know i really don't think it is this one has been around for a while and if they are the first to do it well credit to them to be honest now one thing i always compliment siegel on is their quality control checks well they must be pretty good because i don't recall ever having a siegel watch turn up with an issue and i have reviewed a number of siegel watches now they are producing watches on a scale much larger than the likes of San Martin and Proxima and Boltony, for example. So you would expect to see, I think, a few more quality control issues. But 
yeah, I am just blown away by their quality. I don't think their finishing is quite up there with the likes of San Martin and Kronos, but they're not a million miles away. And they are producing watches on a much grander scale. And this is a bit of a sort of side hustle for them, really. Um, like I said already, <laughs> their main business is making movements. So I do applaud them for the quality of their watches, albeit some of the specifications sometimes are a little bit weak. I mean, this one's got sapphire crystal um, but the crystal in the case back is mineral crystal well we've seen sapphire sandwiches on really really affordable watches haven't we so i think it would be nice to see a couple of pieces of sapphire crystal on this watch of course on this particular watch there's going to be people that aren't happy with the clasp uh, push pins as well but again this is all in keeping with um, vintage watches i believe these are all very conscious dishes i really struggle with those two words back to back don't i conscious decisions um, by Siegel and maybe you could argue they should take that into consideration a little bit more when pricing this watch but I really do believe this watch is priced the way it is or as much as it is because of the movement inside this watch and because I think it is just so original. If you're not familiar with this movement um, let me just quickly run through some of the specifications then. So this is the ST2100. The day date complication is quick change so it doesn't happen over a period of hours. It's instantaneous. Um, on this particular watch, the change seems to happen instantaneously around five minutes to midnight. And I think the tolerances are usually plus minus five minutes. So I think that's okay. The movement beats at 28,800 beats per hour. Hacks, hand winds, 42 hours of power reserve. These are strong movements. I really, really like them. Water resistance, 50 meters. Um, that's okay, I suppose, for this sort of watch. It's not really a watch that you'd be wearing all day, every day. I don't think it's one that I think people are going to add to a collection and not really swim with. Um, perfectly fine for showering and washing your car and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I think the water resistance is fine. Pull push crown. Snap on case back. That's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? Uh, maybe they've done that to keep the thickness of the watch right down. But, yeah. Um, we just prefer screw down case packs, don't we? Now, zooming into the dial, um, yeah, the quality is good. Um, I've said it already. Um, their watches are generally made very, very nicely. Um, hands beautifully cut, polished. Um, same with the applied indexes. The frame around the um, day-date complication is nice. And I like what they've done with the day-date complication, actually. Um, to make it look like it sort of matches or blends in with the dial they've made, the days of the week black and the date complication um, white with a white background. So yeah, I think that works actually. Integrated bracelets, um, yeah, bracelets, nice enough. I mean, it doesn't feel like a really, really premium bracelet, but again, I don't think it's supposed to because they're paying homage to vintage, vintage, oh my God, not another one, vintage watches. But there's a nice mix of um, brushing and polishing on this watch and that continues with the case. A very nice, fairly substantial polished bezel beautifully polished sides to the case and um, longitudinal brushing on top of the case it's i think what i'd expect from a watch that was actually made in the 70s and on my wrist it feels super comfortable i am leaning much more these days towards smaller lighter more delicate watches i don't know if it's an age thing probably is i'm getting weaker and weaker so yeah i probably just feel heavier watches more and more um but yeah i think that's also maybe why i'm loving vintage watches at the moment because on the whole they're tiny compared to um a lot of modern watches but yeah i mean i really like this one on my wrist i've got an average size wrist it's i wouldn't want it to be any smaller to be honest i think it's about right for me it's not going to suit people i don't think with wrists much larger than average um, but there's plenty of removable links so so yeah, it's going to suit people with average to smaller than average wrists, I think. And if you were to pick one of these up, I think you'd be pretty impressed with it, actually. Um, Seagull watches always impress me. I always really, really like their watches. But I'm not always a massive fan of some of their more elaborate designs. Whereas this one, I think they've nailed it. I love it. It's really, really cool. Um, guys, let me know what you think in the comments section. You know, let's stoke it up. I can't wait to um, read what you think about this watch. Right, guys, as always, a massive thank you from me to you for tuning in. I do appreciate it. Be the fourth SN0129 that I have featured on my channel. These watches are incredible. They've got four different listings on AliExpress. On the official store, that is. And um, yeah, this is a very limited edition watch.